You are about to enter the podcast of Hoser Hockey Hour. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are... Final? This is their podcast. This is Hoser Hockey Hour. He shoots, he scores! Hoser Hockey Hour is not recorded in front of a live studio audience. And in case you didn't realize, we totally ripped off the intro from Judge Judy. Because she's Judge freaking Judy. Do we ever really need a reason? Also, rest in peace to Gord Downey, the ultimate hoser. Now, let's get this show on the road, Hoserville. I'm being directed to talk because this is like a TV show, apparently. Um... Yo, so like, rest in peace, Gord Downey. You're, uh, I, I'm, I probably know two of your songs, but you know what? Like, you know, that, that's okay. I feel like most Canadians who are mourning right now maybe know one tragically hip song, but like, it, but it's important to feel like they're a part of something, Michael. So thank you for leading in with that. You're always a gem. We were going um, for heartfelt. Okay, yeah, we we can call it that for sure, <laughs> man. Um, so welcome to episode two of season one of Hoser Hockey Hour. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm leading it in this time because I was mad at you last week. So it's me followed by your boys, Matt Bachinski, and then you get low billing because oh, I, I, you know I can't swear. This show is killing me. <laughs> you Yay, know what? I'm number two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, I, I was supposed to write like our names. I was and I had you as first, Matt second, me third. Because I want to even it out. See, people are going to hear that intro and they're going to think that that was all off the cuff. But no, you wrote it down. It was, like, off, it's the like, it was off the cuff. Because I was in the car and I was coming up with a few things. Uh, see, that's what I do when I'm in the car, people. When he I'm drinks, alone, he like. <laughs> when it was open off the cuff the when car, you wrote it. That's the yeah. important thing. And I was trying different ones, and that one just came up, and I said, "Screw it." So that's the one, and it's usually off the cuff, and then I go home and, and write it because apparently you can't write and drive. No, you're not that. You're not that smart. Um, I'm but pretty like, sure that's illegal. But so what? About, so let, let's just let's just point out the fact that Michael's overpaid. For a jersey he's currently wearing that no one can see right now. I, I think that is, hum- that is amazing. How much does that jersey cost you? Okay. First of all, it's Shea Weber Montreal Red jersey. Home jersey of my beloved Les Miserables Canadians. Um, so I did not want to pay $250 for those horrible Adidas jerseys with the collars that look like bow ties. So the NHL.com was having a sale. $145. Shea Weber. RBK. And I, I was in a weak moment, and I and I paid for it. Dude, I, I I'm I'm hard pressed spending thirty dollars on groceries for a week, and you drop one hundred fifty dollars on a jersey. You're not you're gonna wear for a podcast that no one can see you in. That that that's smart. I wear it for me too. I don't want to know what you do in your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Okay, so let's have. Uh, you know what? I, I realize like. I, I talk too much, and here's Butch literally just looking at us with those little beady puppy dog eyes. Just begging to be into the conversation. So let's have Matt. Let's have Matt lead in this week. You know, let, let, let's switch it up a little. Let bit. me, let me off the leash, boys. Because guess who's in first place? Oh no, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh boy, have I been waiting for years for this to happen? But it's also six like, and one. It's also like yo, know, like but like the the Leafs are going to a good start right now. But look how bad everyone else is doing. Like, would well, you, are you, yeah, are you comparing it's them early. to another Canadian team that's supposed to be in a good start, Kevin? Yeah, uh, the, for, the, for the jersey <laughs> that you're wearing. Oh, and oh. Edmonton, yeah. <laughs> I should have read the damn production notes. I forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, Montreal, too, but everybody, I think, kind of expected them to be bad. Well, Michael did. Worse than they were. <laughs> I expected them to be worse. I, didn't I don't think Habs fans thought that either, but here we well, are. They, here we are. You know what? They're in their own little world. They're like, ooh, we got a francophone player as a forward. We're going to win the cup. And it's like, oh, by the way, you know what we don't have? <laughs> Defense. Oh. Or forwards. Or guys who can score. Or guys who can defend. And since when did Carey Price start to resemble Andrew Raycroft? And then that, like... <laughs> Ooh, yeah. You know what? Is it a little I, too much I, hockey? I, I hear you. What's going on? See, even I don't even know what the hell you guys are talking about. <laughs> but yes, Toronto off to a beautiful start for the first time in like ever, uh, doing like way better than they were at this point last season. Yes, uh, or the season before that, or the season before that, or before that, or before that, or before that too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much since like two thousand four. Like really, 
so like so Matt, as a as a Leafs fan, how are you feeling right now? Are you like like do you think this is a sustainable streak that they're going on? Like, is there room for kind of like I feel like the problem with Toronto is that the Leafs hinge historically on their goaltending, and I feel like once if Anderson's off his game, like he's a really good goalie right now, but I feel like if he has a stretch that he's not good, and you lean on McElhaney, then that's not good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm cautiously optimistic, and I'll tell you why. The Leafs forward depth is unheard of. Their top 10, I think you can stack against any other team's forward group, and it eclipses it 100% of the time. The The depth that this team has, I think, is going to carry them, and it's going to fix a little bit or uh, make it make the defensive woes a little less visible. Like, I'm not huge on the Leafs' defense. I think they're a decent group. They're a mid-tier group. They don't have a number one. I'd argue that they almost don't have a number two. But when you can pot six goals a night, man, if you're winning 6-5, Grant Fear got into the Hall of Fame with that, and I think Freddie can be just as good, so... Well, that, it's and you, know and you know what? To be fair, too, like Anderson has not been great to start the season either. Like he's got like an eight ninety save percentage. Like that's pretty bad in this day and age. So if he regresses back to last year, he had a nine seventeen save percentage. I think they're going to be in okay shape. Well, okay. So now we have the Leafs. Yes, very deep. You know what? If Kapanen is in the Marlies, you got yourself a very deep team. But now we flip over to the other side of this great country we call Canada. The Edmonton Oilers, 1-4, and four, and everyone expected them, I guess, at this point to be 4-1. and one. What is going on over there on the West Coast? I mean, I mean, I don't really care for their jerseys that much. I, don't I mean, you made it abundantly clear that you don't like any of the new jerseys. Not on this podcast. <laughs> but no, I think that like the, the thing with McDavid is he had an amazing first game and we can all agree like a hat trick in your first game or the first game of the season. Like that's pretty, that's tough. I think you have Wayne Gretzky, he's, he's freaking pounding back beers and like the press box. And he's like, yeah, it's my boy. And it's just like, okay, you need to, you need to calm down, dude. You need to, you're too high strung. Is he? I don't think Wayne Gretzky has ever been high strung. Well, like, it's just like, you know, he's, he's just getting lit in the freaking press box. And he's just like, he's like, yeah, go Oilers. And then like the next like four games. four games have just been like garbage. Like, it's just like, it's so bad. And who do you put, who do you put that on? I mean, according to Todd McClellan, you, you can blame the one person that does all your scoring. You can blame McDavid if you're, if you're Todd McClellan, because you clearly want your job. You're going to blame your, you're going to blame your franchise player for not doing well. Yeah, that, I- that's, that's good. Can I make a retraction if the Oilers don't go to the Western Conference Finals? Can I sub in the Kings? Um, um, sorry, can we... Uh... <laughs> can I change that? Can I change that? I totally... You sound like such a... <laughs> you know that, eh? Oh my God. Don't worry, I picked the Oilers too, so we're in this together. I completely forgot about the Kings too. But it's a tale of two different teams right now because like... Okay, Austin Matthews, for example... I, w- I would say he's a great he's and Matt you can probably agree he's a great player you know oh, he's 100%. a cute guy like he he's got the looks he's got he's got the firepower like he's a good guy I think the only issue that I see with regards to why these teams are going in different directions is like who who is like like Andre uh, Andre Sakara in Edmonton like again av- like when he was in Buffalo I was like hey this guy's kind of just average I feel like. Edmonton doesn't necessarily have people that are going to be stopping the puck. And like they don't necessarily have like, a solid D. Or am I completely off base here? You know, they had a pretty good D last year. And Talbot was really good. Both but, was okay. But... No, 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 no. Um, no, like, it's just like, like, like you're saying, like, Cam Talbot was good last year. Yeah, I, I would say he was one of the top three goalies last year. Um, now is it maybe a combination of workload that took its toll a little bit because he had the most games started last year? That's a possibility. Um, Sakara is out right now, so I'm sure for stability's sake that doesn't help the Oilers' D. No. Um, but when you can't score goals, I mean, it doesn't matter how many you let in. I mean, Edmonton right now only has 11 goals. Like, that's... 
That's really bad, man. Like it's just like, when you contrast it to the Leafs have thirty four. Like that's a big difference. But like, who's scoring all the goals on the Leafs? Hey, everybody. I mean, I'm, su- I'm I'm surprised that it's just like like Brown, you said, it's a very deep team. Yeah, Brown's got three, and he started on the fourth line. Kadri has four. Van Riemsdyk has some. Bozak scored. Hyman's been scoring. Nylander scores. Like Marlow. Like I'm I'm just that's half the team. And these guys have multiple goals already. I guess like what's interesting about this is that it, it plays and like this isn't just this isn't just, you know, specific to hockey. I think it's just in general when you you're told something like the Leafs seem like a very young team. And I think a lot of people miss. And I know like for me looking at those list of names, I'm thinking, OK, they're young. They don't necessarily have like what it, like, they haven't proven themselves to be prolific goal scorers. So I feel like. I look at like a name, like I, I look at the Leafs roster and people say it's so deep and it's just like, I mean, they say that, but I feel like because these aren't necessarily household names yet, they don't have necessarily like the same sting as like a Pittsburgh Penguins roster or like even like a Washington cap or like look at the, like the Tampa Bay Lightning right now are doing really good. Like it's like, yeah. they don't have those household names yet besides Austin Matthews and like Kadri. For sure, they don't have the pedigree yet because really they were all rookies last year. Like they had nine or ten rookies in the lineup last year, and for the most part, it's the same team this year. Um, but I think they they've done a good job drafting and developing these guys, and they're letting them off the leash now a little bit, and we're seeing the results of that. Well, it's I think it, it's definitely interesting to see these teams going in very different directions right now. Um, like living in Toronto, I think that we are subjected to the most biased sports news out of any other market ever. When you're you're looking at like the lunch hour TSN, like just like the the noon lunch hour special about the hockey, and all they can talk about is I know it's a leaf centric talk show, but like it's just like every little bit of news is just magnified and it's made to be like this like huge thing. And I'm just thinking to myself, like anywhere, like any other city that has a hockey team does not give enough of a shit about their team that like Toronto does. And I find like, it's just like, again, we're, we're told that these players don't have that pedigree because they're still rookies, but like you look at Edmonton and Connor McDavid has been silent. And like, is that like, do you think that's confidence? Like if, a, if, a, if you have your head coach, it's like your boss telling you, like, I don't think that you're doing a good job. Like, does that, how does that instill confidence? If he's a young, if it doesn't, it doesn't. No, it, if anything, it's, I mean, it could go one of two ways. You can either take that criticism and be like, all right, screw you. I'm going to play my ass off tonight. Then it could also go the other way. And you're like, well, these other guys aren't doing anything. Like, I can't do it all. So, you know, I named off all those guys on Toronto, the forward group that have those goals. Name me three other guys on Edmonton in their forward group. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, it's like, just like... When you start getting into their bottom six, oh boy, it's it's pretty barren. Like, and if you have a guy like Lucic and... Like, when you, when you, you go down the like, when you go down the Edmonton depth chart and you're looking compared to the Leafs, they don't really have anyone. Like, no. it's just like, they, they, you, it's very top heavy. Like, your top line is Dreisaitl. I don't know if Nushin Hopkins is on the top line anymore. No, but it's just, said, he, I think he centers the second line. But yeah, so you said Dreisaitl. So Dreisaitl and McDavid they keep trying to split them up and give them their own lines. And when they Even do that, they worked well it, together it, last it year. doesn't work. Like it, it just doesn't work. But when they're, they're together, it works. But then you're playing with this loaded top line, right? So your second line is something like Nugent Hopkins, Ryan Strom, and Milan Lucic. It's an okay second line, I guess. It's not bad. But then after that, you're getting into like Drake Kajula and like, I don't even know <laughs> some of their other guys. Like, it's pretty barren in the bottom six. And so Edmonton, too, doesn't really have that number one defenseman, that Shea Weber, that uh, Roman Yossi, Drew Doughty, like the kind of stopper guy. You're not it's putting Morgan defense- Riley in that conversation, Matt? <laughs> oh, God, no, no. I like Mo, <laughs> but he's not there yet. No, sorry, that, that's Jake Gardner. That's the, that's, that, that's, that's the no, no, hey, guy. You know what? Gardner, Riley, Zaitsev is a pretty sick top three to build around i mean it's not great obviously you'd like to have a shea weber type guy in there yeah, you know or a, you know one of the, one too, of the you paid too much slick, for that jersey, puck though. skating guy but hey timothy lilligren is coming down the 
down the pipe. So, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, because yeah. and you and you and you name drop that like we're supposed to know who that is. We do know who that. <laughs> well, I know who that is. Well, I was well, their first round pick sp- last aren't, year. Aren't you special, Michael? He's well, a hey. nice, uh, nice slick skating Swedish defenseman. So, and a right hand shot, which is the Maple Leafs have had needed a lot of success with Swedes. Oh yeah. Hey, the two Swedes this year, Rosen and Borgman. I mean, haven't been great. They're serviceable on the third pairing, I think. But uh, there's potential there for those guys too. Like it's uh... anything is an upgrade from Martin Marinson. Oh God, don't get me started on old Marty. Hey, don't get me started. He scored on the Habs in the preseason. How do you think <laughs> I felt? Well, everybody scored on the Habs in the preseason. But what's so what's so bad about Marinson? Oh, Marinson's just slow and terrible, but his Corsi numbers are great. So it's a it's a kind of thing where what you're seeing doesn't match what the analytical community says. So, well, well, isn't that the why Gardner got such a big contract though? Is because his Corsi numbers were great. Oh, for sure. But you see it with Gardner though. Like you see him skate the puck. You see him make those passes. He's got offensive upside. Marinson is a tall, lanky guy. Like he's six foot five. Like that's pretty good for a defenseman. He was yeah. a top ten draft pick too in his draft year. Wasn't he it? may have been. Well, he's an Oilers pick, so you know. They don't have the best track record I used to get with the hockey guys. News. So I used, I used to get the hockey news all the time, and I actually kept most of them. And he was one of the future ones to watch in the World Juniors. And I'm like, how oh, really? bad was that? Oh, team really? Hey? Martin Marinson was the guy, the go-to, the point man. Oh boy. Uh, well, you know what? Like, it, it's interesting because like we could talk about the Leafs and Oilers ad nauseum. But what I, what I think would be interesting is that like like we were talking earlier about how teams are projected to do well. We thought, okay, which teams are going to be known to like just like, and we thought Edmonton was going to do really well this year. And I'm we looking, the Rangers were going to. I'm do looking really at well. Rangers numbers, and I'm looking at Habs numbers, and the fact that Buffalo is ahead of Montreal, I think is hilarious. Like that, that is that is sad. That is really sad. I, I, so let's let's play a little preface, game here. I just want to preface this by saying, and and I'm going to counteract myself in like a minute. Montreal last year, or not last year, the year before had went off to an amazing start and then they went like nine and 21 now who's to say that that can't happen to any of the teams like vegas los angeles it's not going to happen for the Habs. i don't see them turning this thing around it's 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 horrible got it we're only like three weeks into the season we're only actually you know we're only like, like two weeks into the season and we and you're already writing off your team just because you know it was the same kind of vibe that i got when i was watching the playoffs last year and I was watching Montreal, and I've watched this team for a long time. So I pretty much can pick apart that they're going to, like, it's a, it's a matter of when Yeah, with, with them. And I just, they're, for whatever reason, they're just collapsing. The goaltending, I mean, Montoya was in that yesterday. Not entirely his fault. He had a lot of rubber thrown at him. But they're too slow off on, on the defensive side. They're looking like, and I hate to say this, house leaguers out there. Uh, Drewan is the only one that's really the consistent point getter. Galchenyuk, uh, I'm starting to see why people are putting question marks around him. It's just, it's not there. And like you're saying, Toronto has a top 10. Montreal might have a top two, at least. Top three. If- Pacioretty and Drewan. Well, Pa- that's your two guys but even Pacioretty though Pacioretty is invisible he was invisible in the playoffs and he he's been consistently invisible since then so I don't well really- I'll give you this so a guy like Pacioretty is a good piece to have on your team but he's not the piece right like you right. wouldn't disagree with that no he's I- a good complimentary player but he's not your Crosby he's not your Ovechkin he's not your Austin Matthews or McDavid I don't even know if he's going to be, if he's your dry cycle though. I don't think, I don't like, I wouldn't even say he's your dry cycle. Yeah. Like, like he's you basically your 30 goal winger, right? Like there's a few of those guys now. Well, you know what though? It's just like, I want, I want to like, um, I want to change gears here for a second. And I was going to ask you guys, like looking at different stats and stuff like that, like who do you guys see turn this around? Like who's a team that's going to be, Who's the team that you think is going to be able to turn this ship around? Like, like on the winning side or the losing side? Who are we talking about right now? Well, we're gonna uh, well, let's talk about the losing side first. Oh, 
Uh, who do you think is going to? Yeah, let, let's look at that. Like, Michael, what do you think? Give me a moment. Not, not you go, because I really got to think long and hard. Yeah, here, l- let's play a game. Can you guys name me the bottom five teams in the league right now? Rangers, Montreal, Buffalo, Arizona, and I don't know the fifth one. And the Oilers. And the Oilers, yeah. yeah. Three of those five were playoff teams last year. That's pretty surprising to me. Now, not to toot my own horn, but I believe my projections uh, had the Rangers missing the playoffs this year. So I didn't expect them to be this bad. I like how we're like we're talking like a week after making those predictions. Like, oh, I called yeah. it. It's just oh, yeah. like, bro, it's, it's like done. it's literally like a week later. You need to calm well, down. <laughs> so look at let let's look at the Rangers for example. Lundqvist is thirty six. He's not getting any younger. He does not seem to be himself this year. That eight five drubbing from the Leafs, I think, would be prime example. And we were at of that, that game. Represent. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter <laughs> and Facebook. Well, we don't have an Instagram account. No, but I'm saying like we we were at that we were at that we game, at man. That, game. that was that was a lot of fun. So the Rangers have an old team. They don't really have that marquee guy. You know, again, they have good pieces like. I would say uh, a Chris Kreider, uh, Matt Zuccarello, Ryan McDonough. Like th- those are good players. What about Rick Nash? Oh, well, Rick Nash is slowing down a little bit, but yeah, sure, you can throw Nash into that. So they're they're this old older team that, if history has shown us anything in the last ten years in the NHL, once you get your average age around thirty, like, man, look out! You're you can't keep up with the young kids. And the Rangers, don't quote me on this, but I feel like it was four years in a row traded their first round draft picks. And, and that's what it and was. And so when you aren't replenishing the farm and you're trading away your young guys, man, it's hard to keep that up. I think they lost a, 10 years of their future with the St. Louis trade. Oh, for sure. Now, Callahan for St. Louis, okay, you can go either way. But the fact that they, what was it, two first round picks? A first and a second? I don't know what it was. But you look at that trade, and that was kind of the beginning of the end for them. I mean, yeah, they went to the finals with St. Louis, I, I, but like you, you really mortgaged the future heavily on, at the time, what, a 37, 38-year-old? Yeah, a guy at the end of his career. Right? So you, know, you, you lost a lot a of your goals. future there. Um, so absolutely, it's, it's, it is a younger man's game now. That's why Ginla, Doan, Fisher... Uh, can't get a job. Fortunately, Yager had two teams that were willing to to. to sign I feel it. it's like they they with Yager. It's almost like okay, it's more like a joke. You're just like, how can we get this guy? Like like, where's the next place he's gonna go? Like it's just like yeah, Yager. I think is the anomaly in that. It's it's Yager. I think it's Yager. like, we, do we want this? Get do, like, do we want this guy to make it over? Like just to be like the the confirm like the number two in everything, like games played, points, and everything. Is like let's just give him like let's just give him a shot. Like, that's pretty much all it is. Like, we want to break it. We want Notoriety. him to break records. Yeah, Notoriety. that's it. That's yeah. what it is. So so the Rangers, I'm not surprised. I can see them being that bad. The Oilers surprise me. I think the Oilers will right their ship. Um, McDavid's too good. I think once Sakara comes back, their defense will be stabilized a little bit. Cam Talbot is much better than how he's playing right now. The Oilers, I think, will figure it out. Now, maybe they're not going to be that powerhouse team that I thought would win the Pacific Division this year, but I, I think they'll get to the playoffs yet. So, yeah, that's oh, okay. Well, but of uh, those uh, five teams, uh, I think angry. Edmonton's yeah, the only God, one. you're fucking annoying. So, Montreal, I think, is done. They... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Uh... Like, I'm, I'm just looking at the standings here right now and some stats. They have a minus 16 goal differential. So, 11 goals in, I want to say, seven games. So, that's barely a goal a game. That's going to be hard to turn that around. Like, I can't see them scoring 16 more goals than they allow for the rest of the year to bring that back to even. Like, they just aren't scoring. Like, a goal a game, man, that's hard. Like, you can't win with that. Like, they really dug themselves a hole deep early, man. And it's just like, like you said, like, how do you fix that? If you're going to play catch up the entire season, how do you expect to get ahead? And the thing is, there's teams in their division. Like, the Atlantic division is pretty good this year. Like, they're, the Leafs are good. Tampa's good. Like, I see those being the top two teams. Ottawa is surprising me, but I'm not really surprised because I figured they would do that after I said they'd miss the playoffs. So, you have them. Boston, I think, will 
be okay yet. Florida will be kind of that mediocre team. Detroit's overperforming a little bit right now. Yeah. The, I can't see them jumping over those teams. Maybe Buffalo and maybe Florida, but and Detroit, but yeah, like fifth, fifth in the division, I think is the best they can hope for. And how do you fix that though? Or can you? You you can't. Start you you the look at falling for Dolan. Don't yeah, don't turn don't turn that, that into a hashtag. That that sucks. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> like I don't know, man. You traded Sergachev in the off season, so that was your big. You got rid, you got rid of Radulov, which is like, it's a shame. You they let Radulov walk. Which... It's a shame they couldn't resign him because that would have been great. But I think, and I know I said this last podcast. I know th- I didn't think because you listened to it three times. <laughs> I didn't think, nerd. <laughs> I didn't think they bank on someone else swooping in, but. If Radulov did sign, we wouldn't be at minus sixteen. I don't think that's what we're saying. It's like like that. Like there was a shit to let him go. Though. We'd probably be minus ten. <laughs> I you know I don't think one one play. I think you're giving too much credit to Radulov there. Like he's good, but would he be that much of a difference maker? I don't think so. I just hope. You know, Montreal fans are calling for Bergevin's head. Calling for Bergevin's head. Make a trade, make a trade, make a trade. Okay, I just want to say this to my fellow Hab fans. First of all, we can't all be armchair GMs. He's having one, maybe his second off-ish season. But how can you expect a GM to make a trade all the time when he A, has no pieces, B, none of those GMs really want any of those pieces, and three, C, reasons one and two. Because it's so easy for someone to go to Twitter and be like, dude, do something. Because, like you said, trade an armchair GM. Harris, just do it. Trade the farm for Matt Deshane. But <laughs> People don't understand how it works. Like, like you said, it's like you have a product, yeah. but if no one wants it, what trades are you going to be making? I remember, I remember back when Vinny Lee Cavalier, when they were discussing him, a trade for him and the Habs, and the players in play were P.K. Subban, the draft pick that was going to be Max Pacioretty, and Josh George's, and a few other minor leaguers. And I forget who the GM was at the time. I think it was Ganey. But if Ganey had listened to those fans, we'd be in a deeper hole than we already are. It's true. I don't know. That sounds like a Pierre Goche thing, but... Might have been. Might have been. He wasn't that bright. I hated him. Good God, I hated him. But you know what? Let's look back at some of the trades Montreal has made. They have not been good. Like, I don't think they've won a trade of these big trades in five years. Well, like, the, you look the, at dumping McDonough for Scott Gomez. Like, how did that happen? Oh, my right? God. Well, that was just dumb. That was, that was, Pierre. wasn't that Pierre Gauthier? Oh, uh, it might have been. I don't, that, I don't. That, that one's a while ago already. But, so there's that trade. You know, remember when they traded Camilleri in the middle of a game? For Rene Bork? Yeah, for nothing, really. Like, the Halak trade. They, don't tell me they won that trade. Oh God, no! You know, I, e- even with Halak not being ever getting back to that level, he was in the playoffs. Like, what did you get? Uh, Lars Eller. What's his name? Lars Eller. The yeah, softest uh, player third, to ever play in the NHL. Yeah, a borderline third line center. Like, after you had a goalie come off such a high, they should have been able to sell so high on Halak. Like, they should have been able to stock the farm up for a team desperate for a goalie there. But they didn't. I agree. No, I, I called it. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to bring that back. Thank God. Because Michael knows everything. Yeah, I called it. I called it. I called it when it happened. I was like, How, this is, this is going to be such a pain. Shoot, like, we're shooting ourselves in the back with this trade. Because Lars Eller, there wasn't really... Yeah, he was a 10th overall pick. But like people in the hockey circles were, weren't really high on this guy. No one was expecting him to be a bona fide scorer. Nobody was going to expect him to be a bona fide two-way player. And you get this... I mean, they had this other minor league player that was completely useless. Uh, and if you're going to trade with San Jose, offer like St. Louis. Like if you're TJ Oshie, David Backus, something. Oh, yeah. It should have been something like that coming back 100%. They didn't My even ask, get drafted. You, you should have started with Oshie in a pick. Right. Right. Like Oshie's a young guy at that time, you know, a good scoring winger. And Halak, I mean, I know they were saying that Carlson was arguably the only player really that to only make the final four and win a con Smythe. But Halak, after that playoff run with Montreal. Hey, when you upset Washington and Pittsburgh in the same year, like 
that's impressive. That does not happen every day. And after like, like he Washington dragged super, that team to the conference final. Washington had a super team. You know? Oh yeah, that fire. was Yeah, that was probably one of the top upsets in the last 10 years in the playoffs. Arguably 20 years. Like that was a huge underdog. I I thought we were done in 4. Honestly, but then we win game six. And I'm going, oh, we're winning game seven. But then again, but I did, I did, I did not think that they would have had a win. Does that make you feel better? Like, do you go to bed at night just being like, I know everything? Like, does that make you feel better as a well, person? Well, I just <laughs> clearly said that I don't know everything if I was calling Washington and No, but, you're, like, but the fact that like, and, but this is just you in general. Like, we'll just like, we'll be watching a movie and like, there's going to be like a plot twist. And you're like, I called it. You're like, no, it's, it's literally impossible for you to know that. But you claim, I, I'm like, does this make you feel better? I don't sleep at night. Okay, that, that, that's all I need to hear. I, I need you to just shut the f- up for two seconds. That, that, that's what I need to hear. Thank you. Um, oh, oh, my God. Like, it, it's like the fact that I love you, man. Do you? But, that, but that's why. But, that, like, but this, is what, this is what best friends do. Do they? They, they? they make each other. Look at Seinfeld. They make each other feel like shit. <laughs> because they love each other. But I got like another team that I got not fixing this is uh, New York. I think that they're they're written off their season too. Or did we talk about that already? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> we we kind of did, but yeah. Welcome to the club. Welcome oh, to the conversation, so, Kevin. Oh, I should probably get off my phone then. Yeah. <laughs> so Arizona surprises me. I not thought they did win, a lot of man. good stuff in the off season. Like I know we were you, talking you, about you dump Mike Smith and who you got? You got Domingue. And no, no. Uh, Domingue and Wanta. And Wanta. Who has been a very dependable backup goalie. So you don't have Shane. Hey, he, so you he don't have Shane Doe. Big part in getting the Rangers into the playoffs last year when Lundqvist was hurt. Ronto was good. Ronto's been. And I've, then you get Derek, Derek Stepan, Nick Jalmerson. Like, those are good players. Yeah, but you know and what, though? Add that to the young guys there. Like, you know what, though, Matt? They're depth players, though. Wouldn't you agree? Sure. Sure. So if you're yeah, them- again, they're not those marquee guys, but they're good, good, solid players. Exactly. So if they're, f- like, if they're your first, if, I mean, it's kind of the same thing with Pacioretty. You know, they're not, they're not going to be your bona fide superstars. I mean, yeah, Arizona's got Oliver Ekman Larson. I still think they're still trying to learn Rick Tockett's system. Um, anytime you bring in a new coach, that'll happen. You'll have a slow start, but not to be, but to be the only team, five, six, seven games in the season. Without a win, only one point. Ugh. I mean, the, for the five fans in Arizona. Okay. That's got to be That's got to suck. Okay. I, I know we're talking about not sidetracking here. And no one's going to understand what I'm talking about. Look at this. Who the hell is that? Tell me who this looks like. That's you. It's not me. That's not you? Ex- my, okay. My, my friend texted me a picture on Instagram of this random person. That literally looks exactly. I was gonna ask you, who the hell is that? Looks exactly like me. And he has your glasses. But the same hair, red hair, same face. It's like my doppelganger. That looks like he has pecs. Oh well, that's how you can tell we're not related. (laughs) (laughs) That is so crazy. That's weird, eh? That looks exactly like like, you. Because my friend texted me this picture, and I'm like, because all I saw was like the thumbnail. I'm like, why do you have a picture of me? And she's like, doesn't this look like, I'm like, what is going on? And with that. Dude, that's, oh my God. My mind is literally blown right now. Back to your regular hockey program. Oh my God. (laughs) I love it. Number one. Not to to, uh, gloat as a Leafs fan. But I think when you look at some of these (laughs) bottom teams, when you go young, like the Leafs did last year, it's not a guarantee. Oh, it's not. You're taking chances. Absolutely. So look at Arizona and look at Buffalo, two teams that have done pretty much the same thing as the Leafs. Tanked, got some high draft picks, traded veteran pieces for young players, and it's not working out yet for those two teams. And but you, but like, okay, I would argue that it's not just like. But to your point earlier about um. Like, just like you're saying about McDavid, how it's like he's not the one that can make the team, right? Like, Jack Eichel is a decent player. He's not, I think, honestly, I think he's a little bit overpriced. I know we were saying last week, how do you keep it in a city like Buffalo? You give him a lot of money. Um, 
he's not an amazing player. He's like you're looking at maybe like a 25 like goal season on average, I would say. 20 to 25. I think he's got the potential to be a 70 point guy. But like but like the And thing I is think that he like, can be a number one center, but he'd be that lower tier of number one center. Like any other and, team, like Jack Eichel would probably be like a good like on like Chicago. Like I could see him being like like a solid, like a like a second liner, like he's just oh, like behind a guy like Jonathan Taves. Yeah, sure. for sure, right? Like, like like Jack Eichel, like you hype him up to be a franchise player because he was in the same draft year as McDavid. Um, I think that the um, the issue with Buffalo and Arizona is that you don't really have a team to work around young players. You have young guys, but like to their detriment, they trade away their veterans, and they don't have anyone to show them the rope. So these new kids that aren't as good as Austin Matthews that aren't as good as Mitch Marner are trying to figure it out on their own and they can't. Well, and you also have to give props to the development of the Toronto Maple Leafs and how they were able to retool that organization. Because for a while they had a bunch of people that didn't know what the hell they were doing. You were losing like top tier talent, like Luke Shen. And w- w- what happened to Luke Shen? Like no one knows where he is now. I think he's still in Arizona. I mean, who the hell knows, but their development at the time wasn't that great. Toronto has, the right people in the right places. So you were able to get a, I mean, I know they were high draft picks, but you were able to get a lethal March Marner, a lethal uh, Nylander. But at the same time, you also have the perfect depth in Hyman. Like Hyman wasn't a top goal scorer in the Marlies. No one was really thinking that this kid was much of anything. Same goes for, well, Connor Brown was pretty, was very, very decent in junior. But you have to credit the, the, the Marlies and their developments team over in toronto because that's i mean how else are you, you have those lethal forces now if they could do that with their defensive prospects there you there and that's that's coming i think they're they're getting there with the defense but you raise a good point with the forwards and like guys like brown and hyman they probably over seasoned them in the ahl but they let them learn the ropes. And when they did bring them up, they still had some veteran guys. They still have Leo Komarov, Tyler Bozak, James Van Riemsdyk. You know, Morgan Riley, Jake Gardner are young, but they've played for a while. You know, they, they had that good mix of veteran and youth. Even though they had those nine rookies last year, there were still good veterans on that team. And you look at Edmonton circa 2009, you know, you have Taylor Hall, Nugent Hopkins, Nail Yakupov, they just threw those guys to the wolves. Like, those Edmonton teams were brutal. Like, I feel real bad for those guys because they did not get the development they needed. Edmonton had terrible veteran players. Um, It just seemed like they weren't interested in basically changing the culture and writing the ship. Like, you get, you hear that cliche, the culture of losing. And I think that was just a perpetual thing in Edmonton for so long to the point where you had to trade Taylor Hall and Jordan Eberle because that's, that's all they know, right? Absolutely. And so I worry with a team like Buffalo or Arizona that has these young guys that it's going to eventually get to the same point where they're just going to be like, all we know is these losing seasons. And you know, Jack Eichel said it. He's like, I'm tired of losing. And I want everybody else around me to be tired of losing. We have to find a way to win. It's hard to do in the NHL. And if you don't have the right pieces, it can backfire on you. It's probably, well, Vander Kane is actually having a pretty decent season oh, so yeah. far. So, season. No, but like he's getting to a good start, which I'm actually happy about. Ryan O'Reilly has been fairly quiet. Uh, you know, for a so while far. there... Buffalo's goals, they had three guys only who had scored their goals. It may have been the first three or four games. It was Evander Kane, Jack Eichel, and Jason Palmanville were their only goal scorers. That's pretty bad when you have guys like Ryan O'Reilly, Sam Reinhardt, you know, guys that should be scoring, and they're just not. Well, you know what? It's, um, you know, Michael, because you're looking like you're clamoring to say something. I feel like we're... No, not uh, really. You guys have pretty much said it. I'm just thinking now of the teams that are at the top because we've been talking about the bottom for so long. So at the top five teams, Tampa Bay, Toronto, Las Vegas, and the New Jersey Devils? You missed out the Kings. 
And the oh my god, I'm missing out the kings all the time. What's going on with them? And and the blue jackets. That, that, well, blue jackets top six. I mean, they're tied with New Jersey. Yo, has Nico Heischer for the New Jersey Devils scored a goal yet? I feel like he. I feel like thought he had. I thought. I thought he still hadn't. I know he has an assist. <laughs> well, let me let me look because I got him on my fantasy team here. But it's interesting. Oh. But it's interesting how a team like New Jersey that's playing so well, like where is that coming from? Well, I mean, they've had a lot of new faces join the franchise. Well, Taylor Hall being one of them. Well, that was last year. But you know what? It could always be off to a hot. I mean, look at Vegas. I mean, off to a hot start. And hockey is a game of, and we'll get to Nico Hischer in a bit, but hockey is in a game of momentum. We've seen it in the playoffs. We've seen it towards like late season pushes for the playoffs. It's a game of momentum. So it could be that. Also, Corey Schneider, I think, is a very underrated player. He's a very, very good goaltender. He's just had the unfortunate luck of being behind some very bad New Jersey teams. I mean, that could play anyway. But has Hischer scored a goal yet? Uh, he had four assists up to tonight, but he has two goals tonight. Oh! So he's, he's broken the goose egg. There you go. Take some time. Bad news is they're losing 4-2. to two. Well, Against who? Ottawa. <laughs> but. But yeah, so, but yeah, so you were mentioning the top teams here. Uh, Tampa Bay is like at the top of the league here, but it's just like, do you guys think that um, like Toronto is going to be like within the top five of the league at the come season end? Yes, 100%. Top five? Top five. I think the Leafs have shown enough that they're, if, as long as, fingers crossed, they don't have a couple of really bad injuries, they've got a deep team. They're having fun right now. They're a legit contender. Um, yeah, I think between them and Tampa in the East right now, or in the Atlantic Division anyway, but it's going to, I don't know, Mikey, what do you think? I, I see them in the playoffs. Do I see them as a top five team in the league? Top 10. Well, I see them as a top 10. I see them doing, I see them first or second in the division. I really, I really do because that division is completely weak. In terms of the East, uh, that metropolitan division is just very, very, very strong. For them to be top ten, they got to do better than the Pittsburghs, the Columbuses, the Tampa Bay's. Now Washington's off to a mediocre start, but you know what? They can pick it up again just as easily. Yeah, if I was Washington, I'm not worried. They'll be fine. I mean, their their if roster kind of depleted as well. But to to say that they're top five. I'm saying it's optimistic, but not completely out of left field. I just, if it's yes or no, I'd say maybe they're a top six, top seven. I'm very... I'm so very, to answer the question about no. top five is a no. <laughs> there, stop pussyfooting around the answer. Just say it. Yeah. Oh, my God. In terms of teams that are off to a great start that I think aren't going to be able to sustain that, I see New Jersey. And like I mentioned last week, because I got to stick with my, to my guns on this one. As much as it pains me to say this, I think Vegas is going to be the, the other team that's going to drop significantly because they haven't been the best. They haven't played, sorry. They haven't played the best teams. Um, they still have St. Louis. They still have Chicago. I don't really believe Malcolm Subban is that dependable in net. He was still pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen, I saw a lot of quali those, the quality of those shots and... Uh, like they're aim they're right at him. Yeah, it's not sustainable. I mean, it it's a nice story for the first two games there, but Dude, it, the, the it, league it'll is come back it. down to earth. Well, of course the, the league's loving it. Of course they're loving it. Any any desert team, especially expansion, that's that's gonna do well. Of course they're gonna eat that up. And you know what though? It's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting time for that franchise. I just, I kind of, I I just I don't see them making keeping that push. Eventually, reality is gonna set in. And as much as it pains me to say, because again, I love the Knights, I just don't see them keeping with that. And and New Jersey, the reality is gonna keep like kind of catch up with them too, because they're not really who the heck do they have on defense? Damon Severson and 
That's the only Dude, guy I know. Dude, how do you know, know. this? Oh, like, uh, how did, Will like, Butcher is pretty good to start, but like I don't. I, I, that's the thing. Like, what is this team? Because I don't so, see them being that deep. So just to go back to the Knights for a second, I'm going to read you off the teams that they've played this year, and I think that's going to drive the point home that this isn't sustainable. They've played Dallas, Arizona, Arizona, Detroit, Boston, Buffalo. Not one playoff team from last year. You don't think that maybe that was done on purpose or, or by the Bruins? League? Maybe. Maybe. I could see the league doing that. Because, you know, the Leafs in the league, they're cheaters, right? I mean, Lupul and uh, what's his name? Jared Cowan? They've said it themselves. They're cheaters. You know, also, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row at home in October. That's pretty rare to have that kind of homestand. Just any time, never mind to start your season. Yeah, I'm pulling up the New Jersey defense. I don't recognize, I mean, any of these guys. Well, Butcher was that college free agent signing, so that that's good. Severson, I think, has always been a pretty dependable guy. You know, one of those quiet guys. No, I agree. Well, you know what? It's going to be interesting to see how the league unfolds this year. Um, you know what, though? It's, um, it's interesting, Matt. You... Oh, Ben Lovejoy. Sorry, go ahead. How does one know as much about hockey as you do? You watch it, you read it, you absorb it. But like, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like, I can ask it's you, a legitimate what about the hobby. top five prospects? And you can literally, of like any team, and you can be like, oh, it's this person, this person, this person. I'm just like, how do you know this? You are a compendium of hockey knowledge, my friend. It's it is very Thomas. impressive. It, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, you just read things, you listen to things, and uh, you just need to find a girl that finds that shit impressive, it, and then you're set to go. But that, 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 yeah. you know what? Like it's just because like, it's, it's amazing how, you know what? Like as a passive hockey fan, I'm not going to pretend to be as passionate about it as you and Michael are, because you guys are going into stats and stuff like that. That again, I know, but I'm not going to like be able to recite to you on command, right? Yeah. So. I, I find that it's it's impressive that you've compiled all this knowledge and that you are then sharing it with us. We are we are not worthy, my friend. That seems <laughs> that seems it's very cool. Well, I'm glad to share it with people. It's, and uh, now we can. It's fun to talk. I mean, about we're all it. single. Everyone's having babies and getting married. We're having a podcast. We can now go up and be like, oh, so what do you do? I'm podcasting or broadcasting. You know. Yeah, and people are gonna say, oh, how popular is your show? It's like, oh, we have like 23 subscribers. <laughs> Baby steps, my friend. Baby steps. So when our friends are like getting houses and like getting married and stuff, like actually doing something with their lives, we're sitting in your basement recording on a MacBook and like no microphone. And it's just like, who's the real winner here? <laughs> hey, hey just remember like, Zach Boychuk follows us on Twitter. Does he? Didn't he? I'm pretty sure he did. did when was this? There, like the last time Oh yeah, time Zach we did Boychuk. This. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Johnny Boychuk. My bad. And, Bre oh. and Brandon Prust when we started out, liked one of our tweets. That's right. I so, forgot about that. So we, you know, baby steps, Kevin, baby steps. Rome wasn't built in a day. No, I guess, I guess not. But you know what though? It's, it, it's, you know what? I, I'm glad that the season is unfolding the way it is. Um, Keeps us interested. Well, you know what? We're, it gives us stuff to talk about. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see how the playoffs are going to turn out, but <laughs> you just started. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we're we're talking about like the season's end already, so I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know, but like it's uh, oh oh there, you go. God, you're like my mother, it's no, just like no. you gotta censor that out. But you know what? I think, like, but you know what? It's it's interesting. Like, what's uh, what is the, what is there left to talk about? Really, last minute of play. Oh yeah, last minute of play. I got I got. Do you have something? Because I have something. But if you have something, I won't say what I got. Crickets, crickets, crickets. All right, Mike, Mike just say what you're going to say. Favorite hockey movie, go. Goon. Oh, Mighty, Mighty Ducks. Ducks. Kevin says Goon. Matt says Mighty Ducks. I'm going with Miracle. Oh, of course. My you're, favorite you're, movie oh, of yeah, all time. Yeah. You're very quotable. Like, when you find something you like, you'll reference it a lot. 
like it like it's just like you like when you find like like miracle i i feel like when you first watched it i heard about that constantly that was back in 2004 we weren't even friends then yeah you didn't want to hang out with me <laughs> oh my god <laughs> He laughs because he knows that it's true. Don't believe everything you hear, Hoserville. Don't believe everything you hear. Yeah, Michael's really an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? (laughs) Dude, Bass just give me a look like, what is going on here? Um, Dude, I think this is just like, you know what? It's been real, Hoserville. Uh, Thank you for listening to our second episode. And And if I may, if you people there in hoserville if you if you've been tuning in leave a comment let ask tell us what you want oh us here to we talk go about okay because we want to hear from you basically michael doesn't know what we're talking about and we're pandering for likes and subscribes no. so <laughs> be sure to share this with all your relatives and all your family members and all that stuff and uh yeah just be sure to follow us on twitter uh we're not gonna link it i don't know i'm gonna be too lazy um but yeah <laughs> dude it's just like well welcome to the end of season two what do you mean season two? Episode two. Episode two. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Get pucks deep. Matt? Keep your stick on the ice. Stick on that ice. And um... I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning in. It's been real, guys. I was literally on the outro. <laughs> Stay cool. Okay, you can go now. Oh my god, you did it again! <laughs> Cut it. It's over. It's over. You ruined it. You ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast was produced in part by Urban Grin Productions. 